Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Kreuzman with COVIDinstitute.org, and today we're going to do something a little different. I'm not going to present slides. I'm just going to talk about something that's pretty important, um, and I think it's kind of misunderstood in the lay public, and that is oxygen. So we are a machine. We're a biological machine. Mitochondria perform aerobic metabolism by reducing oxygen to oxidize or burn and break down a common metabolite, acetyl-CoA, uh, that's generated from glycerol, fatty acids, amino acids, and glucose, the building blocks of fat, peptides, proteins, and carbohydrates, respectively. So mitochondria in each cell, they burn the fuel in the presence of oxygen to extract the energy, produce waste, and heat. This is no different from a regular car engine, gasoline or petrol, that burns your gasoline in the engine to produce a product, waste and heat. Our cells, um, they generate oxidized byproducts since this is not a perfect process. Ideally, if it was perfect, 100% of the fuel will be converted into carbon dioxide and water. That's the final reduced product from any given fuel. However, our bodies are only able to do 40% um, efficiency or 40% of the chemical energy can be converted to ATP. So what happens to the other 60%? Well, some remains as byproducts, as basically the burning byproducts, and the rest is expelled as heat. So let's use raw, raw, um, iron as, um, as an example. Iron rusts due to oxygen. That's also an oxidative reaction. It gives up, the iron is giving up the electrons to the oxygen. Um, so to kind of say it another way, oxygen is reduced while it oxidizes the iron. That's called a redox reaction. When one atom loses electrons, it becomes oxidized. Another atom gains electrons, it becomes reduced. So as fuel burns, electrons, usually in hydrogen atoms, are transferred from the carbon to the oxygen. Electrons and glucose and other fuels have this potential energy. As water, which is the lower state, uh, we consider that lower fallen or fallen from a, a high potential to a lower potential energy. As atoms are rearranged, um, these falling electrons release energy. Our mitochondria captures, capture this energy in the form of ATP. Another example, for instance, is fire. If you take a piece of wood or something that you're burning, it's going to release this energy as light and heat, but there's also going to be byproducts remaining. So is oxidation good for us? No. Is oxygen good for us? Again, the answer is no, but it is necessary for us to burn fuel into a usable energy form and to kill pathogens. We only need enough oxygen for what mitochondria need to accomplish their goal. It is a necessary evil. It is a toxin. Have you ever searched on Amazon or Google for oxidant supplements? Anyone? Anyone find any? Can't find any? Why not? What about antioxidants? How many antioxidants are out there? Why do we take or want antioxidants? Is it to remove oxidized byproducts before they can damage DNA, proteins, and fats? We have an internal antioxidant and radical scavenger system. Um, one of the molecules that's responsible for this is glutathione. So what are some of the antioxidants? Well, vitamin C, vitamin E, quercetin, rutin, resveratrol, selenium, zinc, NAC, N-acetyl, um, N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, mel melatonin, curcumin, um, the substances in black seed oil, alpha lipoic acid. So all of these are considered antioxidants. And if you notice, you really have a lot of antioxidants, but really not a lot of oxidants. And nobody seems to want to buy or purchase oxidants. What are some oxidants? Well, the big one is oxygen, right? Um, ozone is a huge one. It's one of the most oxidizing substances that we, uh, that we have. Uh, tobacco smoke, high alcohol intake can do it as well. High fat diets uh, have a lot of oxidation in them or oxidants in them. 
So let's talk about, I guess, breathing first. You know, what is the, what is breathing? Is it just inhaling a quantity of air or a quantity of a gas? Or, or is there more to it? What your body needs and where all this happens is in the mitochondria. The, if you're not getting enough oxygen into your body, your mitochondria are gonna, not going to be able to do uh, aerobic metabolism and they will do anaerobic metabolism outside of the mitochondria. So your, your body essentially needs what it needs. Anything additional, what happens to all that additional oxygen? Well, it can oxidize different tissue because this will create uh, a cellular oxidative stress inside the mitochondria. At best, it can use 40% of what, of what it's given. But if you give it more, um, it will produce more reactive oxygen species. And these are the ones that are normally trapped within the cell. But if you produce enough of them, they can escape and cause damage. Uh, in the nucleus, outside the nucleus, uh, and in the body in general. So let's talk about hyperbaric oxygen. Um, we've evolved to work over 21% oxygen in the air, but what if you increase it to 100%? And to top it off, you also increase the pressure, which means that it's going to be delivering more than 100% oxygen into your body your tissues will have more oxygen to work with for sure, but it's also going to produce more oxidation. Okay. There is a use for hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, for bends. For instance, if you've ascended too quickly and have um, gas bubbles in your blood for carbon monoxide poisoning, for ulcerative, um, ulcer, uh, uh, um, unhealing ulcers, for uh, antibiotic resistant infections. And it's all about risk versus benefit. Why are you doing this is the question. What about ozone? Well, it's an unstable and reactive oxygen molecule. It's like oxygen, but supercharged. Do you think it's good for you? Is high concentration of oxygen good for us? Well, the answer is no, but it may be necessary if your body is not able to extract sufficient oxygen from room air. Uh, for instance, if you have lung, lung problems such as COPD or asthma, or if you have heart disease, or if you have vascular problems where you're not able to get oxygen to where it needs to go, such as the heart or brain. In those cases, there's more benefit than risk. But you, shouldn't, you should not avoid uh, using oxygen if you're short of breath or have low saturation. That's not where I'm going with this. And there is some benefit... Um, to hyperbaric oxygen, um, it's kind of like a little, <laughs> a little bit of poison has some some usefulness. Um, but make no mistake about it, oxygen is a toxin. Um, no matter how you look at it, it's a toxin. Um, I really hope I explained this well. Um, talk to you soon. Bye bye.